And welcome to our time. Mitchell Butel holds four Helpman Awards for Sydney Theatre Awards and two Victorian Green Room Awards for his work as a director, actor and writer in Australian theatre over three decades. He's worked all over the world, both as a performer and a director in more than 150 productions. But now he's here. Hey. Mitchell, welcome. Thank you, Malcolm. Lovely to be here. Thank you for coming. We've been chasing each other for quite That's some right. time <laughs> because you have got to be one of the busiest men working in the entertainment industry oh, in Australia. Like, like you could sell. But, yeah, I'm having a lovely time um, at State Theatre Company, but it is a, it is a very... Busy job because you're you're producing our own work. I'm often acting or directing, and but I'm trying to see as much uh, theatre and and other great culture around Adelaide. At but the you're same also time. in so many other aspects of the business as well. Yeah, I've been really lucky. I've, I've been uh, an actor since I was uh, 20, and I've been directing for the last 15 years or so. But yeah, and I've been a bit of a singer sometimes. I'm not a very good dancer, but uh, a you bit can of a learn. writer. I know, right? I can I can dance from the torso. That's right. I didn't take up. up ice skating until I was 36. So oh, there you've got, you go. I've got time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, but it's a very privileged position running such a beautiful company that has uh, such great history. So. But did you? Did you feel you had to give in to something because a performer, a, an actor is an actor and that's the profession and now you've swapped roles to be an administrator yeah, as well? Yeah, a little bit. Like, because uh, I acted for, for just uh, for many years without directing or producing mm. and I loved it. But I got to a point, uh, I'm 52 now, but in my 40s where I went, oh... I work with a few bad directors where I can do better than that. <laughs> and, uh, but you, you get to see things more laterally and you think, oh, I think I know how to help other people or help facilitate them and and so I thought I'm always keen to try different things and so I kind of started directing and uh, started to go well and then um, uh, when this job came up Geordie Brookman who was my predecessor said I think you should go for this because I'd done a few shows with State Theatre right. Company over the years. And so I, you knew the family yeah, so to speak. Yeah. So I'd that worked, helps doesn't it? That certainly does yeah. and um, I've done lots of I've been in many commercial musicals so I've been here a lot with um, a lot of musicals so I love Adelaide so I was like a beautiful company, a beautiful city, a really great community. I thought, I'll have a crack. And I didn't think I'd get it. So I was very honest with what I thought I uh, wanted to do with the company. And, and mm. uh, funnily enough, they said yes. And so here I am, three and a half years later. But interestingly enough, you're the first uh, major company to come out of COVID with a production. Mm, that's right, in Australia. So Gaslight, at, uh, which opened the new uh, refurbished Her Majesty's Theatre, was, as you say, the first production back on a main stage in the country after mm. COVID. So we were, it was a bit of a risk. We could have lost a lot of money if it all went belly up with another lockdown. But it, we, I think it turned out to be one of our highest selling shows ever. So, Yes, well, the t statistics are, are showing that you actually have increased the whole subscription and the whole yeah. ticket selling and we've, we've companies. Been lucky. Yeah, I think it's the uh, subscriptions are the highest they've been in five or six years. And we just uh, co-produced Girl from the North Country, a Bob I Dylan musical. I saw that. Oh, great. Loved yeah. it. Oh, great. Yeah. And that's the highest selling show uh, State's ever had in Adelaide. So um, it's, it's, it's well, been it a Well, it was good such time. an unusual piece, although personally I hate the American accents in our work. Yeah, However... Right. Yeah. You have to understand that that's what the piece is. So. That's right. Yeah. But it was so. such um, it was such a wide production. There was so much in the production. Oh, good. Yeah. And um, I actually saw it in Melbourne. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's a beautiful piece, and I, like taking, I guess it's a, more a play with songs than a musical because yes. it's like uh, the songs are not kind of moving the narrative forward. They're more like interior monologues for each yes. character. But but well, what, it didn't need dancing. No, that's so right. So to speak, that's it. it. It yeah. really needed the action that, that you'd put into the piece. That's yeah. it. And it's great. Like, so many great Australian actors like Peter Carroll and Lisa mm. McCune, but, but to see great Adelaide actors like Terence Crawford and James Smith and, and Lizzie Hay kind of now, they open, I think they open in Auckland in a few days. They're previewing right, right now. So the fact it's travelling around, you know, giving a lot of people a lot of uh, joy is a really wonderful thing. So let's go back to the beginning for you. So how did you start off? Did you have a passion? Did you end up going to classes? What did you do? Yeah, well, uh, my dad's a milkman and I um, had been a very beautiful singer, so he sang to me from very early age. My dad early was age. a bread deliverer. Oh, man. there you go. Similar, similar um, histories. <laughs> so he sang... I hope, I hope for everyone. Yeah, look at, look at us. We're doing a double show together. <laughs> yes. So, yeah. So he used to sing Danny Boy and Running Bear and Roy Orbison okay. to me and I kind of got the, the singing bug early. And I did a lot of shows at home, little bad, you know, Christmas nativity things behind the lounge. And, um, <laughs> but then 
did a lot of uh, school musicals and all that kind of thing. But I got into law school and I thought, oh, I want to be a lawyer and because I came from a very, you know, working class housing commission um, area family. Got into law and I thought, that's what you do. But I soon realised the law was not for me and I just wanted to be rumpole and, you know, wear wigs and capes and say, I object. <laughs> so, uh, so that ended. And I didn't, but I finished my arts degree, which, uh, which was in theatre studies. And from there, I, um, I lived with three NIDA students. I never went to a drama school, but I did a lot of theatre history and, and um, a more kind of critical studies approach to theatre and went, see, started getting a, jobs. Yeah. You made a very valid point because these days most actors virtually have to go through one of the major tertiary facilities to be even looked at or to yeah. be taken by an agent. Yeah. What was your advice? Well, it's interesting. Like, I, I went to Australian Theatre for Young People, another uh, youth theatre company called Pact, so I was very passionate. I did, went to the Actors' Centre and so I was constantly studying. I just wasn't in a drama, drama school. Mm. But From a young age? Yeah. Did you start off quite Pretty young? much, and I've always been obsessed. I'm still reading acting books now going, so you want to act, you know, directing 101. <laughs> but um, I never, I've never thought that I... I know enough, so I'm still continuing to, to learn. But the three NIDA students I lived with who were great, but they, NIDA at that time was very body conscious and, you know, what did you look like? And I was a very nerdy, you know, wimpy little um, theatre nerd. And I went, oh, God, I'm already... My self-esteem's already shot. I'm not going to go to NIDA. So I kind of went a different route and I started working for the New England Theatre Company with a, a great director called Gary Down and opposite Carol Skinner, an actress you might know from Prisoner. Mm -hmm. And from there did Grease the Musical with David Atkins, which went for about 14 months. And that's, that was really my training. And that, yes. It's yeah. nothing like getting training on the job oh my God. with a good director. That's right. And David Atkins uh, was a really big mentor for me. Yep. And from that, I got a job at Sydney Theatre Company under Wayne Harrison, who's in Adelaide at the moment, actually, teaching at Flinders. And it all started to roll. And so I really learnt on the job watching... And my first job at STC with Jackie Weaver and John O'May and... And watching them perfect a performance and getting better and better every night, I went, oh, OK, I think I see how this works. Yes. So, so yeah, on-the-job training for that's me. That's actually interesting because uh, I guess that's how I learnt too, mm. watching the performers and listening to the audience reactions to what they were doing. That's it. Hearing their timing, you know, where they were in the light, all of those things. We learnt where to stand to make sure that... Yes. I drive them nuts here with lights everywhere to make sure... Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's know. the thing, yeah. Mm. And... And when I started working film too, that thing, I did a film called Dark City with William Hurt and Rufus Sewell and Jennifer Connelly and I was, William was like the police detective and I was his little um, sidekick. But that thing with lights, like he was very generous to me. He's like, no, 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 your key light's over here. You want to be here. The camera's there. We're on a wide angle. So like, you know. It doesn't just happen. No. And just He was very good to me. And that thing about listening to your elders, whether it be in film, TV or, or theatre and watching, learning and taking the anecdotes, taking the advice. Mm. I really, th and I say that to students I teach now, I'm like, it's so important like, to garner as much knowledge and expertise from those who've, who've come before you. Well, it's true. If you don't know what's happened before, how are you going to know what's going to happen in the future That's to you? Right. You really do need to get that history in your head. Can't okay. break the rules until you know them. So. Well, you can't. And funny enough, a lot of the old show rules have sort of gone, like whistling in the dressing room and all that. <laughs> I'm very whistling in the dressing room, peacock feathers. No, not can't saying do that. the Scottish play. Yeah. Yes, I st if people do it, I still out you go. Yeah, do yeah, the thing. Do the thing. Yeah. Do the thing. <laughs> Everybody I ever work with hears that before they know it, because why people want to whistle in the dressing room is oh, beyond yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. But most people don't know why. Because it's the fly tower. Uh, the fly it? tower, and they yeah. <laughs> could the old end up something coming the... down on your head. Yeah, yeah, bang, exactly. Bang, so, yeah. yeah. It's funny, it's lovely to talk to somebody that gets it. Ah, <laughs> because funny. we don't, these days, we don't see that many people who actually do, you know, who understand that history mm. and realise there, there is a rich history that we come from mm. that if we don't embrace to move forward, we sort of miss something that is the joy of being a performer. That's so right. And a friend of mine, Meow Meow, the cabaret performer, she was just in Adelaide for the Ad Cab Fest, and she's someone everyone says she's very avant-garde and new, but in fact she goes... She's so in touch with vaudeville traditions and Gypsy Rose Lee and Sarah Bernhard and, and so, so many of the things she does are kind of old tropes from vaudeville mm. and early music hall mm. and, and, that, and she's a real student of the past. And I think in order to, you know, go forward in terms of being a performer, particularly in the theatre, having that knowledge is, is, um, is really 
helpful and wonderful. Well, it is. I must admit, I've never admitted to this before, but I always sign off this show with Keep Yourself Nice Till Then, which to me is another old thing that came out of the music hall. A throwback, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Very much so. So, Because people don't sort of say those old sayings anymore, which is a shame. Yeah, yeah. Because we'd all laugh. Yeah, yeah. Um, we've got to take a short break, Mitchell, Great. but I want to find out a lot more about what you've been doing in your life because it's just fascinating. Uh-huh. And we'll be back with Mitchell in just a moment. And we're back talking to Mitchell, who's the Artistic Director of the State Theatre Company here in South Australia. Mitchell, um, your life... Have you sort of, did you have a plan, a direction to how you wanted to go or did you just know when to say yes? Oh, isn't that, that's a great way to look at it. Yeah, well, I was intending to be the great lawyer, et cetera, but, uh, but I knew in my heart I wanted to be a performer. I mean, you know, I had the hairbrush from a very early age, singing <laughs> to the wall unit mirror. Uh, so once I committed, once I got through that early stage of going, okay, that's my path, and I, even it was really hard, I couldn't get an agent, I couldn't get a job for a while, but once I went, that's my dream, I went for it. And, you know... I, you, you sort of got it, don't you? Yeah, you do, and you lose a lot of things dedicating yourself to a life in the performing arts because, mm. you know, you miss out on a lot of weddings and baptisms and funerals and, and stuff because you're performing on a Saturday, yep. you know. Yep. But, and I say that to, you know, you see young people that go, oh, I want to be an actor or maybe I want to be a biologist. So I'm like, oh, it's be a not biologist. Gonna, well, that, or, yeah. but it, unless you've got that passion, yeah. like, uh, it's a hard road, but it's a beautiful it, road. Well, it's that old saying, unless you, it, unless you need to do it, like breathing, mm. don't. That's right. Mm. And I, I guess I'm at my most comfortable when I'm on stage, which sounds weird, like a isn't weird it? thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I think the great thing about theatre is that, you know, life is so chaotic and, and entropic, but in theatre, you know, 400 people get together and go, here's a problem. At the end of these two hours, we're going to try and fix this problem or at least view it in a way that makes us feel better about our life or how we deal with that problem back in the real world. And I think that's a really beautiful thing. Like, reading a book's beautiful, watching a film's mm. beautiful, but a group of people coming together to experience uh, something in crisis or even if it's just something delightful, yes. experiencing it together... There's no better feeling in the world. Well, the other thing is you're all breathing the same air. This Mm. is how I would describe it. You're all breathing the same air and no performance is ever quite the same. Mm. There's always those little things that are different. That's right. And memorable sometimes. Yeah, which is the joy. Like I love on an opening night if something, you know, stuffs up early, I go, good, so get that perfect (laughs) thing out of the way. Now (laughs) I can just relax and and have fun. It is that, isn't it? So, so leading up, do you have do you have sort of traditional things you do to feel comfortable before a performance? Yeah, I um, Nancy Hayes, who I work with, she she always blesses herself in a particular way backstage. But I, this is really daggy, but I this is and kind of gross. But I've <laughs> I've got the same little makeup towel that I've had on every show I've ever done. Yes, uh, and that's thirty years old. It's a bit mm. frayed now and covered in makeup. I wash it, but uh, <laughs> and I I kind of lay that out in the same way in every dressing room. So I kind of go, that's my workstation. It always looks the same. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, if, if it's a makeup show or if it's, you know, just my toothbrush here and you know, a jar of m ms to keep me happy. But to have a little, it's like a little travelling gypsy thing. Yes. You open the case and you go, what do I need? For, it's more of Well, it's a, like putting out your tools that's right. as a workman yeah, would do because yeah, you're yeah. a workman in this situation. So that's, um, and I always keep a little journal um, during each show. I, they all say the same thing. Week one, I'm fabulous. Week two, <laughs> I'm terrible. Week three, why did I say yes to this? Week four, I think I see way out of the problems. So I have um, routines of how I rehearse and stuff. And every night if I'm performing a show, I'll go home and note myself, um, like what things I could have done better or things I think are a bit problematic in the show. And that, in a way, is a good training to be a director because all the director is just is someone who looks at five options and goes, oh, I think that one's the best one mm. or clean that up a bit. And, yeah. Well, I suppose, well, the actor's job is to give you something and mm. the director's job is to work out which one you want. That's right. Is, yeah, yeah, it's not for the director to go, do it like this. I think mm. the director is there to go, do you feel safe and comfortable about make providing some options and you go, mm. oh, I love what you're doing there, go further. So mm, Exactly. Yeah. So. so where do you feel it's all going? Do you think we're repeating what our parents saw? Do you think we're moving forward? What's the, what, where do you think the theatre's going in the future? 
I actually think it's a really great time for the theatre because, um, you, you know, we can stream so much Netflix and Stan and all... So we, we can have these wonderful entertainment um, uh, kind of services at home, which, which are fabulous and, and, you know, who doesn't love that? But I kind of think, particularly coming out of COVID, the need to kind of come together and be with other people and, be and human laugh again. and be... It's, I think there's a real desire and, and mm. need for it. And... I don't think that'll ever go away. And We're wired to go out to things. Yeah, I think so uh, too. To join other people that are strangers. Yeah, yeah. Um, and have a group experience. Yeah, really. yeah. And even like, you know, look at the great things like the Adelaide Fringe and yes, it's a big social thing. You go and get your Pirate Life beer and your Yeros and you hang out in the garden. But at the end of the day, you want to see a show. You want to have a yeah. laugh with your friends. Otherwise, it's a kind of a dud night, Well, there has you know? been a bit of a movement like to venues like mine moving mm. out of the city for those sort of shows to see what is moving out and mm. now it's certainly with the Adelaide Fringe it's now at South Australian Fringe because it's moved right out into the suburbs. Yeah, oh, yeah. No, sorry, into the country centres yeah. more than the suburbs. And we thought we, we perform primarily at the Adelaide Festival Centre mm. and we've done, you know, the Royalty and the Queens and, and the Scott and, and um, the showgrounds but with the plaza now being nearly finished, thank God, uh, a lot of the renovations being nearly finished at the Festival Centre with the casino being built, once that new tower's there... I could already feel feel you can feel people returning mm. to the centre now, which is which is great because um well it's a perfect location the centre right on the river yeah uh, you know one side is the arts and entertainment area the other is the big sporting Sport, entertainment yeah, area yeah. it's at, uh, jam band right in the middle of Adelaide really that's right. And, and I we, think sport, sport and arts, I think, are actually quite similar things because at the end of the it's day... It's a show. All, that's right. It's a show. It's just a show. Yeah, yeah, with yeah. skilled practitioners, yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So training for, for that, you've obviously got to select actors, you've got to look through, talk to agents, look through acting um, information and so on. How difficult is it when you're putting a piece together to find the right person? Mm. It's a re really interesting question. I mean, there's a, such a talented community of, of artists here in, in Adelaide and I've been, because I get to see so much and, and I see a lot of amateur stuff as well and there's, the amateur scene's so fantastic here as well. So we've, we've stolen people from that and go, come and do a show for us. So that, I think there's a real uh, great pool of, of talent here but sometimes... Um, you need very specific skills for for mm. a certain role. We were doing a play later this year called The Normal Heart, uh, which is about the AIDS crisis in New York in the in the early 80s. And there's a uh, a character, an act, act, a female character who lives with a disability. She's in a wheelchair. She suffers from polio. And we're at a point now where we very consciously reached out to, to the whole nation to say we're looking for actresses with lived experience and disability. Somebody, yes. And um, and we found found someone who's amazing. Who's um, uh, we'll announce uh, this week, actually, who's an amputee, uh, but from from a bone cancer, actually, but incredible actress, and knowing that she's going to play the role of Dr. Emma Bruckner is in a really wonderful thing because you go very uh, the resonances of the role will resonate very deeply with her. Mm. Plus, she's a very fine actress. Plus, this is a platform for someone who may not have had many other opportunities. So. So being very specific about it, finding yes. the right actor is great as well. That's interesting, yeah. not having the opportunities. It must be extraordinarily difficult for a performer because there's not that many plays written or pieces written for yeah. people like that. I've noticed it's happening more in film and television now that we're actually seeing people with whatever, whatever's happened to them in their life That's playing right. roles that are not specifically written for characters maybe missing an arm or a mm. leg or whatever, but the incorporation of that is obviously smoothing out society to yeah. understand we've all got abilities That's right. and we can use them. And I think you make a great point too. It's not just about, oh, it's a disabled character, therefore a disabled actress. Like we did Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf last year, the great Edward Albee mm -hmm. play, but from a whole uh, First Nations director directed. So we had a First Nations George, we had a white Martha, an African uh, Australian refugee playing Nick and a Vietnamese Colombian um, Australian lady playing Honey. So to kind of go, oh... What are you doing to this great, great classic? It's so to try and do things that are well, have perhaps written differently, but to in a new lens, that's that's a real uh, goal for us too. Do you feel you need to have or be somewhat controversial in that way to 
rejig these older pieces? Yeah, sometimes. Give them new life? Yeah, not like with Gaslight, it was a pretty traditional reading of uh, the play, except we we did gender flip the policeman. Yes. But uh, but with this you one... You came under criticism for that in yeah, some... Yeah, a little bit, yeah. But, but was, at least people were talking it was about fun. it. fun, that's right. But with this one, uh, Margaret Harvey, who directed it, really wanted to look at... Uh, you know, a, a history professor in in this in New Carthage. What would it be like if it was a black person playing that role? And the Albia estate has let it happen before, and we had to go through a lot of you know justification with the Albia estate for this. But but it really opened the play up in lots of new ways. Um, so it's fun to I think not always to shake it up like that, but occasionally mm. look at things uh, in a different way. But. Uh, next year we're doing, I oh, can't announce it yet, but a very, uh, an adaptation of a oh, very... You can, you can. Oh, no. We won't tell anyone. Oh, just it's very, we'll very exciting, in the commercial a, break. An adaptation of a beautiful South Australian novel, which will be very super traditional. So so that's exciting. He's thinking, he's thinking South that's, Australian yeah, There you go. Uh, no jumping involved. <laughs> um, not that one. Uh, not that one? OK. <laughs> I'll go through all the others <laughs> as I start thinking about them. Mitchell, um, with... with pulling these pieces together, making decisions as to what you think the public are going to want to see must be the most difficult. That's a really, really interesting thing. It's Simon Phillips, who used to be the artistic director here, who's a great mentor of mine, used to run Melbourne Theatre Company as well. He said it's about providing a... It's like a Christmas lunch. You've got to provide a buffet for the audience. So someone wants KFC, someone wants, wants caviar, someone wants the roast. He said you have to provide a real, you know, a difference of, of opinion. So that's a really important thing for us because we are the only continually operating professional adult theatre company in the state. Mm. So, you know, to have a comedy, to have a tragedy, to have a First Nations work, to have something that's very just pure entertainment or something that's very kind of challenging and avant-garde. It's having everything. You've got to tick a lot of the different boxes. And so some people will not dig something, but they'll dig something else. Mm. But I think it's about going, knowing something that's different and surprising in each production. Mm. That's the big kind of test for myself and the team to kind of go, how does this yeah, feel? Yeah, what do we you work know? on next? Yeah. Well, we've got to take a short break and we'll be back with Mitchell in just a moment. Mitchell Boutel has been our special guest and we haven't shown any of you oh, in some peculiar and unusual and things. So <laughs> let's whip through these outfits, particularly this one. That was uh, Mr Burns. I was playing Mr Burns at State Theatre Company a few years ago, the evil, evil villain, so, which was a lot of fun. Uh, that's uh, Hibernation, which I d uh, directed for the company last year. A great new play by South Australian playwright Finnegan Crookemeyer. I love the look of the set. It's beautiful. Uh, that's me in a, a Gentleman's Guide to Love and Murder in Melbourne, where I played eight characters based on an Alec Guinness uh, movie, Kind Hearts and Coronets. A lot oh, of, fun. of course, yeah. yes. Oh, you're God. Playing God there in a play. With a microphone. An act of God. With a microphone. I couldn't project. <laughs> a lot of fun, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> bringing like some that. new commandments to the world. That's the first show I did at State Theatre Company as artistic You're director. Blonde. That's me, blonde, in a show called Dance Nation that we did, did in the festival. Did you do it? Did you blonde? I went blonde, yes. Yeah, I enjoyed it. Blondes didn't have more fun, though, unfortunately, okay. so maybe next time. You've got a dancer's body, even oh, though you said you, you don't dance. <laughs> That's me just looking smooth, you know. Schwab. <laughs> Very schwab. <laughs> and that's oh, a great play Angels in America that I did at Belvoir Street Theatre in Sydney a few years ago, the wonderful Tony Kushner play. So I uh, like The Normal Heart, a great kind of a classic of the, the queer theatre canon. Right. A lot of fun. And me as Shylock in Merchant of Venice for Bell Shakespeare, which went to 27 venues around the country. Amazing. Yeah, Do you like touring? I love touring. Love getting around the country in the bus. It's good fun. That's Nancy Hayes in Ripcord, the first show I directed for State Theatre Company, the, the legendary Nancy Hayes, Amazing. who gave me my first ever job too, so I thought I had to repay the favour. So. Oh, isn't that brilliant? I love that. Yeah. And the wonderful Justine Clark, um, known to audiences from Play School, of mm -hmm. course, but here in a very different role in Girls and Boys at the Adelaide Festival last year. A wonderful performance. Just great seeing some of your work. So quickly, because oh, there's so much. Oh, I've been very lucky. We could just keep talking forever. I love talking to you, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's been lovely. It's thank fun. you so much. And thank thanks for Malcolm. making the time in this very busy schedule. Oh, yeah. it's a real pleasure. As I, I really say, it's appreciate a it. great part to be, to be, a pleasure to be part of this wonderful community in Adelaide and to be oh, uh, helping fantastic. State Theatre Company through this time as well. So. Yeah, congratulations on everything. Thanks, Malcolm. Time for us to say goodbye, sadly. So until next time on our time, as I said before, keep yourself nice till then. See ya.